Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. It's uh, been a busy week. I got a, a new vehicle, had to pick up a topper, had to uh, take the wrap off the boat, take the boat to the dealership, getting a lot of things accomplished for next year, uh, finalizing the wrap for next year's boat and truck. So it's just one of those things. I've been really busy uh, with the business side of the sport, kind of solidifying some sponsor agreements for next year and moving, moving right along. I mean, it's the, the winter off season, which, you know, a lot of people think once the tournament season is over that we have several months off, but I almost feel like I work harder after the season's over to get ready for the next upcoming season and to deal with some sponsor stuff and other commitments that I have. So, uh, it's been a very busy week. And I'm just taking a few moments here to do a video. And I wanted to do another episode of the School of Hard Knocks. Uh, I've done several of these in the past. I haven't done one recently. But for those of you that are not familiar with my School of Hard Knocks, these are when I take experiences that I've learned and I provide them to you so that you do not make the same mistakes. Uh, really, it's just a matter of these are all lessons that I feel like <laughs> when I say I learned them, it took me like four or five times before I recognized what was going on. And now because I know what's going on, I don't make the same mistakes on the water. Uh, so the school of hard knocks today, the topic has to do with current and ledge fishing, uh, not just specifically ledge fishing, but really current fishing. Anytime you're dealing with current and ledge fishing, generally comes into play if you're talking about current. So I'm going to include ledge fishing. The lesson here, guys, is anytime you've established a good current-related bite, whether that's out on the ledges, whether that's fishing a river, it doesn't really matter. But if you've got a bite that is totally dependent on the current, not, I won't say totally dependent, but is significantly improved because of the current. So if you've got a ledge spot where you're fishing a hard spot and you get good current flow and the fish are stacked up there, there's bait. You know, if you're fishing a river and you've got a wing dam that's got a bunch of fish on it, uh, you know, any spot that you've identified and you're ready to go fish because it is a current related spot. The school of hard knocks lesson here is if you get a wind that is coming from the opposite direction of the current flow. So you have you have a wind that is blowing against the current. You need to recognize that this will change that current bite. Uh, for me, I've learned this this lesson a lot of times. You know, as an example, one time was uh, on an area that a lot of people don't realize is is current dependent. But if you're talking about Great Lakes fishing, the Great Lakes are very very much dependent on current flow. And I cannot tell you the number of times I've been out on the water and I've had a really good bite and then you get a wind switch and it just shifts the current. And the current now has moved the fish completely away. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with Sturgeon Bay, the actual ship canal in Sturgeon Bay will have current raging from the Lake Michigan side into Green Bay, you know, at one point and next thing you know, it switches and it's raging the complete opposite way. So this is an example of just because you establish a good bite that is current related, if you get a change in wind direction, that can drastically change that bite. So what happens is you, because that wind is coming from a different direction, and we saw this, you know, last year at the Pro Circuit event on the St. Lawrence River, and this is something where my experience really helped me. We had days where the wind switched and, and the guys that were fishing some of their smallmouth stuff offshore, middle of the river, really had a tough bite. And it was because of the fact that that wind was blowing against the current and it really reduces the current flow. And when that happens, the fish do not have as easy of a time feeding in certain areas. So if the current flow is less, you get smaller eddies, you get bait fish that don't that are not stacked up and pushed into certain areas. Uh, you don't have, you know, the gobies, if, you know, depending on where you're at, the gobies, the bait fish, the crayfish, they all can get out and move freely. They spread out because the current is not pushing them into certain areas. And if you get the bait that spreads out, 
the game fish that are feeding on those bait will spread out as well, which makes them tougher to fish for because you have one here, one here, one here, and you've got to cover a lot more water. In my personal experience, I also believe that the fish just do not feed as well. They don't want to expel an excessive amount of energy to try to go get bait fish over here or a perch over here. They'd rather wait for a more opportune time when that current is stronger and let the bait be brought directly to them. It's, uh, it's just one of those things, guys, where you need to recognize that that current flow really dictates the fish activity levels and puts the fish in high percentage spots. The lighter the current flow, the less likely that fish will be grouped up in certain areas. And I don't necessarily mean grouped up as in terms of like numbers of fish in an area. I'm just saying there's less likelihood that a fish needs to be sitting behind a log or, you know, will be sitting up, on, you know, right on a current break or on a ledge where the, the you know, they're right behind the top of the ledge because the, the current's bringing bait over the top of them. In my opinion, what happens is those fish spread out. So to, to combat this, there's a couple things I'd recommend. The first is if you are truly fishing a river, body of water, or someplace that has good current flow, with that decrease in current, you still will have areas that have more current than other areas. So, you know, as an example, if you have a bridge that is a pinch point, bridges can be good areas still to fish when you have current blowing, when you have wind blowing against the current, because that bridge acts as a pinch point. And you'll have more current there than you would in other areas. So you still will have the likelihood that there are fish utilizing that pinch point, that bridge, to feed. Uh, the same goes for, you know, if you've got outside bends, outside bends will have a couple of spots on that, that bend that generally have stronger current where the, the water hits the bank and where it leaves that bend. Those are the, the two prime areas. So you still can look for areas that have current, you probably will not have as good a bite as you would have if you had normal conditions, but it still will increase the likelihood that you can catch fish. The other thing is, you know, if you're fishing out on a ledge and you had a school of fish right on a ledge that dropped from, you know, 14 feet to 20 feet, and there was a bunch of bait there, the likelihood is, if that current isn't there, that those fish have spread out on top of the ledge. Uh, it's my experience that that's a lot of times when they get up and they start roaming the top of the ledge. When the current kicks up, that's when they'll pull back to the ledge and utilize the current to bring the bait to them. You know, a lot of ledge fishermen that are watching this are probably going, yeah, when they're not drawing power, you know, or generating power, you have a lot less current and the ledge bites never as good. The more current you have, the better. Well, it works the same way if you have a wind blowing against the current because that's just stacking the, the current flow up and the fish are not as active. So guys, the lesson here is, in the school of hard knocks, take it from me, I've learned it the hard way. I finally beat it into my head a few years ago. If you have a pattern that is strictly based on current, that pattern will not be nearly as good if you have a wind that is blowing against the current. So you need to have your backup plans and you need to have other high percentage spots that you can look for. So I hope this was helpful, if it was, Hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, stay tuned for tomorrow's video.